For a vacation full of Americana via Scandinavia, a special domestic voyage is here. Not by jet ski, but rather the comfort of a cultured Viking river cruise down the mighty Mississippi. Welcome to Popular Cruising. I am your host, Jason Leppert, and this is our deck by deck tour and review of the namesake Viking Mississippi. Starting right at the waterline of deck one is the bow, seen in time-lapse fashion, as we pass below one of the awe-inspiring bridges of the upper Mississippi. In contrast to Viking's limited size European longships, the line's domestic equivalent is much taller, wider, and bigger overall to accommodate up to 386 passengers. In fact, as we walk along the riverboat's full wraparound promenade deck, consider that Viking recently stretched the 2022 launched vessel by 21 feet, mostly at the stern, in an effort to improve efficiency, smooth the hull form, and reduce vibrations felt by guests. To similarly enhance your YouTube viewing experience, we invite you to please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to be notified of all our latest videos. As we finish our stroll, it's worth noting also that the Mississippi product draws 85% of guests who have already sailed on Viking, so you know you'll be in good company when you plop down into one of these cozy rocking chairs while riding your cares away behind the American-made builder's plate. One area in particular that closely resembles Viking's exceptional ocean and expedition ships is Mississippi's own double-decker explorer's lounge, but this time on a lower level. Its expansive views are slightly blocked, sitting immediately behind the raised bow. But the atmosphere is just as inviting as on the line's other vessels, as is its added cost Paps Explorer's Bar. Where I enjoyed my favorite coconut lavender lemonade, rendered creamier here than aboard the rest of the fleet. The lower level of the lounge features a grand piano, but I didn't see this one played during our sailing. Next door is the riverboat's scale model adorned forward lobby, and friendly guest services desk, complete with illuminated passages from the literary collection of Mark Twain. It was here too that the crew freely served us non-alcoholic slushies as a sublime oasis, chasing the destination's unseasonably sweltering heat. Speaking of the heat, while it was great to see familiar Helly Hansen Viking logo jackets on sale from the boutique, they weren't exactly top sellers on our sailing date, but offensive plush is always a good idea to take home. Extending from there is the living room and attached library, as well as self-service included coffee station with cookies throughout the day to take and enjoy at several nooks and beyond. The expansive gathering space is conveniently contiguous to the observation lounge, making the forward venue a good overflow when this one fills up with passengers during daily briefings. And I sure appreciate the high-tech translucent display screens that can be seen through to make the space feel visually larger, and it's all nicely decorated with Viking's usual Scandinavian accents, from a game and puzzle corner to said library full of fiction and non-fiction books. It really is an impressive selection for an intimately sized ship. And I must point out my affinity for the venue's U-Turn Audio Orbit custom vinyl record player, given I own the same make and model, also in walnut wood. However, it's the live music that most shines thanks to a great house jazz trio that puts to better use the piano here, as do talented guest entertainers, like a classic pianist, or even Billy Joel, an Elton John tribute artist. Also familiar to former Viking guests will be a display of traditional Nordic dress, as well as welcome bonus seating nooks like this handsome waiting area at the restaurant. The ship's full service main dining room is of course included and looks very much as it does on the line's other vessels. Daily menu offerings are larger than on the European longships, but not quite as extensive as on the line's global ocean vessels. Still, food quality is up to the standards of the seagoing ships including the likes of a regional Louisiana Jumbo Lump Crab Cake, decadent mushroom brie soup, traditional Norwegian Gravlax, full-on surf and turf, and a seriously sweet strawberry Monterosa cake. All before making it up to Deck 2, where the Upper Explorer's Lounge is located. This level used to be configured just for lounging, but has since been converted to double as a lecture hall with drawable curtains. This makes the space a good secondary alternative to the living room downstairs for interesting presentations and fun trivia sessions alike. But when not in use for these purposes, the drapes unfortunately are not fully pulled back to showcase the view and architectural loft overlooking the bar below. Just outside, an even smaller but equally cool scale model of the Viking Mississippi is on display at yet another set of casual seating nooks, flanking the stairs just in time for us to explore the private accommodations we enjoyed on board. Our 268 square foot deluxe veranda stateroom was marvelous, 
especially for being nearly identical to the same category on Vikings ocean ships. That means its comfy bedding is not only teddy bear approved, but so too are its flat panel television and free on-demand programming and overall spaciousness, especially as found on a riverboat. At the entryway are the first of several pull-out drawers, safe, coffee station, and shelving. that extend further at the closet with more drawers and half hanging space on one side and full hanging space on the other. Nightstands, having neglected some crumbs in their cleaning, are at least marvelous for featuring electrical plugs and multiple USB charging ports at both sides of the bed. Below Viking's sweet showcase of children's art inspired by the destination are two chairs and a table, but sadly there is no available room service to best take advantage of them. Still great, though, is the vanity desk design with awesome pull-out style mini-fridge and flip-up lit mirror, plus QuietVox audio devices, and another set of electrical plugs, and many more USB charging ports. Outside, the balcony is great except for cobwebs and the debris of flying bugs, which are somewhat unavoidable in the region. But back inside, there is even more to praise, notably entry-level bathrooms that are anything but cramped. plus Viking's lovely signature Freya toiletries, welcome temperature controllable heated floors, an ample square footprint shower that only suffered a bit from lacking mildew and grout maintenance. Oh, and never to be forgotten are the bathroom's handy hooks. Jumping up to deck five is where Viking Mississippi continues to copy from its larger seagoing sisters with the included river cafe and attached extra cost bar. There even used to be a Momsons here, but it was inexplicably removed, favoring instead its sunny seating and self-service buffet stations on the other end. Opening this fixed window to the omelet station during a future refurb would make ordering easier without crowding the rest of the hotline. But once to the other breakfast items here, some exceptional biscuits and gravy and other staples await. and lunch is equally as appetizing thanks to other comfort foods, pizza, and more. And then dinner is just as delicious with selections extending from glazed salmon to a cold line of salads, charcuterie, midday poke bowls, and evening sushi. Meanwhile, desserts including exceptional cookies beckon from the other side as the bar's neat live edge counter stretches beyond. And that's not even pointing out the additional Aquavit Terrace and dedicated and still included barbecue, which at lunch serves burgers and other grill items in addition to side salads. And at night offers a raw bar of shellfish and cooks up perfectly seasoned steaks for even more surf and turf and a side of makeshift loaded mashed potatoes. My wife and I were so thoroughly impressed with the buffet and its available alfresco views that we only dressed up to go to the main restaurant twice since we preferred staying casual here. And finishing up on board at least is the Sun Terrace and its infinity plunge pool at the stern. This is the location for sunbathing in or out of the shade with an ice cold beverage in hand thanks to a free soft drink cooler guests can help themselves to. But to best beat the heat, it's the pool that most hits the spot. It's not particularly deep nor good for swimming, but it's just right to submerge under the surface while taking in the aft views. One shortcoming is that the aforementioned prevalence of bugs can accumulate on the water surface if not frequently skimmed. In either case, this is the place to be when sailing to get unique views off the back of the riverboat as seen here as jet skis chase us to play in our wake from the fully translucent side. To operate in the US, this is the only Viking vessel that is proudly all-American staffed and flagged, and naturally that experience extends to excursions ashore. On our 12-day America's Heartland itinerary, the week-long cruise portion began in St. Louis, Missouri, where we bust past the famed arch from Vikings' own private coaches, as well as local museum oddities. 
Before embarking the riverboat, we also got a first-hand look at the river engineering it takes to dam and canal transit vessels at the impressive National Great Rivers Museum of Alton, Illinois. As a gearhead, I particularly enjoyed taking an elevator to the top to see all the inner workings from high above. It may serve as an example of nature being technologically tamed, but we should still never underestimate its sheer power. Farther along the route, Hannibal, Missouri stood out as a charming little town, but also the birthplace of Mark Twain, and even the unsinkable Molly Brown known to Titanic aficionados like yours truly. But from a drive-in diner and his boyhood home to several museum stops, it's Samuel Clemens' pseudonym that gets most of the attention here, and rightly so, as one of America's greatest authors. The main museum was especially interesting as an illustration of his life along the river, all before returning to our own riverboat seen just outside its wheelhouse. Although there are no coat factories, wink wink, to be found at this particular Burlington, our Iowa stop was nonetheless rewarded with a warm local musician welcome and chance to see the locale Snake Alley. Not unlike San Francisco's Lombard Street, the gradual descent is steeper than it first looks, at least from a pedestrian perspective. And it's even a Ripley's believe it or not recognized road that ended for us with a brief greeting from a cute bunny rabbit before exploring a cool museum that was once a public library. But it was Galena, Illinois that we found to be the most patriotic in its showing of the stars and stripes. And its timeless architecture made it look like a studio backlot ready to film a movie at a moment's notice. And nothing says Americana quite like a root beer tasting. Who knew there were so many varieties on tap to try? Of course, the soda sampler didn't preclude us from grabbing an ice cream from an old-fashioned parlor as well. As became a recurring theme on our trip, La Crosse, Wisconsin showcased our national symbol of the bald eagle, steps from where Viking Mississippi docked, as did this adorable bronze statue of children and their dog. And yes, once again, we managed to find ourselves in a trio of a confectionery, ice cream parlor, and coffee shop. What can I say? We do love our sweets. And once to Wabasha, Minnesota, the National Eagle Center took center stage as punctuated by a beautiful fountain and where habilitating eagles can be seen up close and personal. That sure is one impressive animal and facility overall. On the same day, we also visited the Maiden Rock Winery and Cidery of Stockholm, Wisconsin, where we learned a bit about bees, but not the birds, mind you, and then tasted several yummy ciders out in the beautiful orchard. Last but not least, our river cruise concluded in St. Paul, Minnesota, where yet another fountain and striking architecture drew us in and we just happened to be there in time for the Minnesota State Fair. So we headed over to try its latest bizarre foods, like a surprisingly delicious pickle pizza and less tasty fried ranch dressing. But we couldn't leave without saying hello to some more cute animals and even playing some classic carny games. All of this is to say we sure enjoyed our Viking Mississippi River cruise. As we watched the riverboat's impressive ejectable gangway retract, you may be ready to book yourself, and we recommend doing so through our sponsor, Fairy Godmother Travel who will magically take care of all your trip planning absolutely for free. To get your complimentary quote, just click the link right here or follow the website, phone number, or email address below. Now to conclude with our final pros and cons. What we disliked as pains in the aft are some cleanliness and maintenance shortcomings, missing room service from staterooms and suites, and partially closed curtains at the otherwise scenic upper observation lounge. But what we most liked and can take a bow are the significant efforts already made to improve the relatively young vessel, its super-friendly service and tasty comfort food, and overall, its near-perfect blend of Vikings' other river, ocean, and expedition ships. Thanks so much for watching. If you would, as it really does help support us, please like this video with a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel while hitting that bell icon to be notified of new videos. Watch our other ones and visit popularcruising.com.